Electric scooters. In as little as a year, we've witnessed them go from being a novel tech bros toy to being realized as the new mode of independent, emission-free travel. And as we discovered in our last video, more and more people were voting with their feet. I think micromobility in terms of transport is taking over. At the peak of the pandemic, e-scooter sales exploded. And in a bid to understand them, the government fast-tracked legislation, or at least their version of fast-tracking, and launched nationwide rental trials. Privately owned e-scooters, however, still remain illegal to ride on public roads. Imagine only being allowed to drive a car if you were renting it and not being allowed to own one. As the months roll on and the heated debates in the comment section continues, it seems we're still clueless to where this is all really headed. What's the deal with rental trials? Are the government suppressing private ownership because they're scared they can't make money from it? Will privately owned e-scooters ever be legalized? And if they are, how should they be regulated? It's time to dig a little deeper. I check out a couple of rental schemes, including a clever long-term hire that gives you the experience of private ownership and speak to some of the key players in rental and retail to set the record straight. Alex, thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a privilege. This is Alex Klimt. He's the UK expansion manager for Swedish micromobility powerhouse Foy, the UK's biggest rental operator. The, the honor to, uh, to travel to the UK, to the big island, and introduce the micromobility e-scooter scheme uh, in, in the country of England. And uh, yeah, so far so good. Uh, we call it the Boy United Kingdom now. Amazing. And, and how did that all go, the first launch? It was uh, exciting. It was, it was different, I would say, because I've been in uh, launching cities all around Germany, all around Europe, where, where really the legislations are different from, from what it is in the UK. And we really had to adapt to, to, to the local standard and, and, and had to really listen hand in hand to what the city has in mind. And, and this was really, really new to us. The Northeast piloted the UK's first rental trial in July of 2020. Initially, there was positive press, which quickly turned sour. Articles detailing reckless e-scooter usage on dual carriageways, used careering through shopping centres involving near misses with the elderly, and scooters left cluttering pavements causing huge concern, not only for the local authorities and rental companies, but also for those in the private sector, like Ride LEV and Halfords. You know, they do, they do get bad press, but I, I think it's all for the wrong reasons, you know, it's, it's for misuse. On a pavement, pedestrians walk really slowly, right? So. You don't want to see an e-scooter tearing down the pavement. In Germany, obviously, that their crackdown was for e-scooters was to no riding on pavements, which is completely the right thing to do, you know? No riding on pavements, on roads, in cycle lanes. For the pavement, we are working with a company called Luna, where we have integration on, a, on an e-scooter that actually can, can, can measure and can actually recognize bad behavior. For instance, the Luna, there's a camera inbuilt that can see that you're riding on an e-scooter. We reward good behavior, but we will also punish people with bad behavior. Luna is a seriously impressive piece of AI that enables its vehicles to detect pedestrians and pavements. The scooters can essentially see what's around them. Voy have also introduced ambassadors across the city to help educate riders on proper usage, implemented slow zones around heavily pedestrianized areas like parks, use license plates to identify riders, and crucially, have parking zones to cut down on the clutter. Overall, Voy's measures have been well received by the Bristol police. Singing nothing but praises, the local trials were described as a policing non-event, leaving them massively reassured. So well, in fact, in February of 2021, a long-term tender was introduced that allowed West of England residents to lease a voice scooter for £35 a month, have it delivered to their door and use it as if it's their own. WECA, the West England Combined Authorities, they also introduced the e-scooter tender, uh, not only for short-term rental, but also for long-term rental, to give the people a feeling of owning a vehicle, an e-scooter, but still be legal, right? In the short-term rental for Bristol and Bath, you have mandatory parking, where you need to bring the scooter back to a certain mandatory parking spot just to avoid clutter. But if you're in the long-term rental scheme, you don't need to abide the way to those mandatory parking zones. But we do encourage everybody, please, 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 do not be reckless when parking the e-scooter. West of England combined authority uh, in bus ticket cost uh, roughly 88 uh, pounds. So you can get the e-scooter uh, Voyager 3X, which has a range of on the full charge 60 to 100 miles, uh, depending on ups and downs, for 35 uh, pounds uh, a month. Long-term lease offers advantages over short-term lease because it's there at your doorstep ready to go. But actually the cost to do that over the medium term is just is much more expensive than buying a privately owned e-scooter. So, um, I, and I, I'm quoting maybe some numbers, but I think it's about 30 pound a month. Once you factor that in, you'll have bought your own e-scooter well within a year. I think it's about £35 a week you pay now. 
the time of a month. A, a month, exactly. So you're going you're gonna to ride it for six months and then you're going to want your own one. We've seen some more interest from other councils about it now, especially that we have started. We hope that there will be legislation and regulation coming, uh, coming going forward and that we don't necessarily have to focus on this to give the people a private ownership feeling. And we hope that the government will introduce it to their people themselves. Long-term leasing is essentially a clever loophole around the current legislation. Basically, there are good transitory stand-in for what we're all working towards, private ownership. I think it's about time we check it out for ourselves. I'm here in Bath today, which is my hometown, born and bred, because I want to try the electric rental scooters from Voy. Now, obviously, I can't try the long-term scooters because I do have to be living here, but I'm going to give the short term a go and see how they fare and try to talk to some people in the community to see what they really think about them. What do you think of the rental scooters here? I think they're quite cool, but I've seen people riding them in all sorts of places they probably shouldn't, shouldn't have done. It's like an activity, especially during lockdown. Like, it's a fun little day out, I guess. I, I looked at the price, they're quite expensive. And I think a lot of people are probably going to be a bit, feeling a little bit limited because you can only rent them, you can't own them. I think they're quite cool, actually. Um, they've got their plates on them, you can legally ride them and they're just easy to get about on, especially at rush hour traffic, you can weave in and out of traffic and they're quite easy to use. I'd love to try one, I must admit. I'm not, I'm not against them, but uh, they need careful control. What is the end goal for these trials? The government needs to get on board rather than against us. They're not, ho they're, not, they're not hindering, but they're not helping. They just need to be a bit more proactive. The rest of Europe's managed it. Our preference and what we've asked for as part of these consultations is for them to be likened to e-bikes. And I think that's a reasonable assumption that that will happen rather than the government adopting the German standard, which in some ways is just more specific than what's already been put in place in the UK. In Germany, really smart, they introduced a new vehicle class, which is called the Klein Elektrokraftfahrzeug. And, and you know, it's like a light uh, electric vehicle. There's nothing to suggest that we're going to absolutely align with Germany. If anything, we're going to create a legal framework that's right for the UK and our road. They restrict it for, like, like I said, 250, 300 watt. You know, it's not going to carry a larger person. Speed needs to be, I, I think, yeah, I think the, motor, the motor is irrelevant. I think yeah. it's the speed. The speed limit that's been determined appropriate for e-bikes is 15 and a half miles an hour or 25 kilometers an hour so absolutely that should be aligned because then these vehicles can just coexist in parallel on, on the road it's like saying we're going to ban ferraris because they go 170 miles yeah, per hour that's fine it can go that speed but you're if you're on a 30 miles per hour road that ferrari is only going 30 miles per hour and where this will come i think it will be a mixture of the german classification of a new vehicle but at the same time it will also be a regulated market. So you have the tenders and you have the classification of a vehicle. And you put that together, that's the United Kingdom when it comes to, to e-scooters. It comes all the way back to, it's like the Road Traffic Act of 1988. And they actually ended up in there because they're powered transporter. And that needs to change. The government just really need to pull their finger out and go, Let's make these legal. That's what, that's what needs to happen. No petitions, just make them legal. You need uh, indicators, you need brake lights, you need a helmet. That's it, done. And you need, to, you need to read the highway code and you need to use a cycle lane. Stay off the pavements, don't be an idiot. Speaking of the government, there's been a lot of noise in the comment section stating that privately owned e-scooters will never be legalised if Boris can't make any money from them. I don't see uh, rental trials being a money maker for the government at all. I think the reason that they fast-tracked rental trials is absolutely in line with their green restart strategy for COVID and to encourage alternative use to public transport. I think there's just, there's just no evidence to say they're going to be making money out of these scooters and, and therefore I just don't think you can make that lead to saying that it's going to hamper the future of private ownership legislation. Boy technology and the e-scooter industry, we have we have created so many jobs. That is something the government wants. With jobs come taxes, and taxes is government. Here, please, yeah, it's a win-win, right? It's not like they, it's about money. Absolutely not. What, what money are they making from the trial schemes, the government? Personally, I disagree. I think it's more about safety. I don't think they want to make money out of this. I think they will need to bring in some money to be able to offer 
a safer environment. To build an infrastructure, basically. It costs money, right? Yeah, it, it, it costs money to put workmen to put the lanes in. It costs money, it all costs money. So they're gonna, they're gonna have to reclaim it from somewhere. We're now a year on from the pandemic, eight months into the trials, and a lengthy London tender is only just about to launch in the spring. It's reported only 11 of 33 boroughs have agreed to participate, which to me, it's kind of disappointing. And in a city like London, it takes time. But I think that throughout that trial, the legislation and regulations could come because you have already gathered a lot of feedback, data and knowledge from other cities. It's London where these have the most opportunity to replace other journeys. I mean, we see that in our data. By far, there's a, there's a real kind of concentration of our customers purchasing scooters for the London area. London's very complex. complex. I think once London, the L London trial scheme... It's cherry on the top. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that is the cherry on the top. And I think after that, we'll start seeing change. That's why we're doing the trials, because the UK wants to be on the safe side and introduce something in half a year, a year from now. And we were looking much forward to what the outcome is. But we're very positive and we believe that legislation will occur. Recently, Electra has conducted a survey which found that nearly nine out of 10 people called for the immediate legalization of electric scooters in the UK. We had over 1,000 respondents with over 50% saying that they've never ridden an electric scooter, proving that even non-riders are pro-scooter. Which begs the question, when are we getting legislation? I think we have to be realistic here it's looking like the second half of 2022 probably towards the end of 2022 before we can expect legislation to come into force and that's just from from what we can surmise off the back of knowing how legislation works in the UK. So we have kind of helped also. We're helping the councils and the cities forming those legislation. So this is super, super interesting. Like I said, it's going to be a mixture of tender regulation, but also a classification of the vehicle. And that's the UK when it comes to e-scooters. The fast track of rental trial legislation has meant that e-scooters are even more in the public eye and people are therefore waking up to them being a real alternative, um, a real green alternative to sort of short journeys that they would have maybe made via the car or even alternative really in these times to public transport. We're in the middle of a revolution. Just the, the news from The Guardian, we need to spend 240 million pounds on infrastructure. That just tells us we're on the right track. So you can see that the, the, the big players, Seat, have just made their own e-scooter. BMW and Mercedes are talking about uh, redesigning their boots. So there'll be a compartment just to literally stick your boot, your like a charging, charging dock within your boot to put your scooter in for that for that last mile journey. Everyone sounds pretty positive about future legislation. So if it's all headed in the right direction, is there a need for rental scooters? Absolutely. I think they can both coexist. They offer totally different things. So someone that maybe is just dipping their toe or maybe infrequent users might choose ride sharing as part of the rental uh, market as their best option. But somebody that wants to then use an e-scooter daily or even a couple of times a week as an alternative to public transport or to replace a car journey. In terms of rental, would I love to go to Barcelona and be able to jump on a scooter? Absolutely. Would somebody from Barcelona love to come to London and do that? Absolutely. They're serving a purpose to that demographic at the moment or whoever is in that location but I'd much rather have a scooter leave from home and get to the town centre rather than get the bus to the town centre. Why do I then need a scooter? I know when you own your own private scooter you're already in the feeling right? There will come a day when you don't have your private scooter with you but you still have in your mind oh I need my scooter. Well you see a rental scooter you take it. The two different vehicle types can coexist. Ultimately we want e-scooters legalised in, in every form because what that's going to result in is better city centres, greener city centres where there are going to be less cars on the road and also less congested city centres, which ultimately are going to be more safe for everybody, for pedestrians and for and for e-scooter users alike. Private e-scooter legislation, please UK, please introduce it. We want it because uh, we want to change the behaviour here and, and, and we, we're not after the big bucks right here. We are after a change in mobility. Whether you're pro or anti-electric scooter, it's clear that change is coming. In fact, it's already here. Speaking with Voy, Halfords and Ride LEV, I truly believe that we're getting ever closer to private legislation, even if authorities are taking their sweet time. But can we risk being so hesitant whilst we're faced with a climate emergency? However, there is a glimmer of hope as trials continue to grow and infrastructure is repurposed thanks to the £250 million Emergency Active Travel Fund unveiled last year to better our cycle and walkways. So, this is a reminder that there is hope on the horizon for e-scooter legislation. 
and there's ample room for both private and rental. Because at the end of the day, it is all about our safety. Doing it right and having a clear understanding of how electric scooters can be regulated. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither can the retrofitting of our city's infrastructures. But I'd say we're getting pretty close. 